hundreds of tomatoes from three plants. Hi, it's Robbie from Southern California and the trough is doing fantastic. I'm getting hundreds of tomatoes. Look at this. I'm going to do this. Oh, a bird got that one, but I'm going to get this one. Oh my gosh, these are sun golds. These are fantastic and it is just loaded and it is still throwing flowers. I don't even have to feed any compost tea or anything in here because you saw that when I filled this up, it was all leaves and branches from the garden. All that is breaking down and making the most wonderful fertilizer for these three plants. Now on the other side, oh here you can see it's popping through there. Those are the cherry tomatoes growing, the red ones. So I've got both the red ones. I haven't noticed any yellow ones. I think the plant got drowned out by all the other, well, I should say the other two. It's still alive, but I haven't seen any yellow. You know what? These are the yellow ones. Well, excuse me. These are the yellow. I see a couple yellows there and here are the yellow ones. So it didn't get drowned out. This plant does need some good grooming. I'm gonna come back and do this. The reason I'm in a hurry to get this done so you can see it is I'm having a birthday party here this weekend. And when the kids come, there's usually no tomatoes left. Let me walk on the other side. Now, when I put the trough there, if you remember early on, it was just months ago, we didn't have this awning here. And so now I've got a pole. I think I would have set it up differently, but of course I'm not going to move it or do anything right now and I'll decide later. But that is the reason I wanted to get in here and show you the three tomato plants. There's even, look, a pepper plant in there. And it's got a pepper. Look, can you see it? Look at that. I stuck a little pepper plant early on and that is fantastic because when the tomatoes die back, if they do in the winter, that pepper plant's gonna keep growing and probably end up really big. So right now it just hides underneath the tomatoes because peppers really don't like a lot of sun. They don't like the hot sun is what it is. And that has been working out good. It's hugged up against the wall of the metal trough. And so it's doing quite well for a little pepper that's been forgotten about. But yes, I have to correct myself. I took a quick look and I wasn't paying close attention that that was yellow on the other side. So I've got the yellow, the red, and the orange all fruiting now wonderfully. And I'm so pleased with this. They taste fantastic. I just walk through and water and pick. I don't pay attention that much to everything. I would check out the birds, but I looked about a week ago at the yellow ones and I didn't see any yellow tomatoes until just now when I picked up my camera to talk to you. So now I'm really excited. I'm more excited now than when I first started this. So this trough has been so great. You can get them usually for around, well, I can't remember, under $100. It's not gonna fall apart. It is solid as a rock. It is designed to be used with cattle. So your kids, your dogs, your animals, nobody can do anything to this. It's gonna last a long time. It's one piece, you don't have to put it together. And I did find out that you can have one of these ordered online a lot of times from, I think it's Home Depot and they deliver it. So check that out. That's been fantastic. If not, somebody could bring it home for you in a, in a truck or a, a large car, but this has worked out great. I'm so pleased with that. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Three tomato plants. I think two would have been enough, but I'm really pleased with that. And then the water has been draining out and it waters around the base which helps with these walking onions. But I have found that these walking onions are not happy. Let's step around here. See how droopy they are compared to this one, which has not been groomed, but look how thick the stalk is and see how skinny they are. Walking onions need sun and it's too shaded because the sun is coming from that way. It's blazing on the tomatoes, which love it, but they're here and they're not getting sun. So they're really sad, but they still taste good. So keep that in mind. And they're in pots, I can move them, but it's protecting that hose that when I overwater it, it can drain out with that hose and these two pots are stopping me from tripping on it. So I'm gonna leave that. These are in the ground, but they're getting the sun and they really are sun loving plants. Just like tomatoes are sun loving, though I will have to say we grew a tomato one year in the complete shade and I couldn't believe it was growing tomatoes. So every plant is different. And keep that in mind, if you're planting seeds, especially tomato seeds or any seeds really, but let's talk about tomatoes. 
and you plant a whole bunch and you're going, well, what did I do wrong? This one's doing so good. And the other plant's not throwing as many tomatoes. And this one is loaded with hundreds of tomatoes. Well, every seed is like a kid. Every seed is its own, let's say, person, but it's not. And what I'm trying to say is each plant is an individual and they will grow differently. You'll know what you're growing as long as the grower packed them right. You will know that, let's say, there's sun golds or let's say cherry tomatoes in the variety you bought. But it doesn't mean that every plant's going to perform the same. Every plant performs on its own. And it's kind of like tree color. It's like this large tree colored back there. You can't really grow that from seed. Though it will throw seeds, you're not going to get the same plant because that was designed. And once they got the exact plant the way they wanted it, they started selling cuttings. Cuttings are clones. When you have a clone, it will produce the same type of fruit or leaves or whatever you're trying to get. But when it comes to tomatoes, it's exactly the same thing. I can pick any one of these tomatoes, and a lot of you know who grows sun gold, that I won't get sun golds if I plant those seeds because sun golds were also designed. So I could end up with red tomatoes, cross-pollination, or just going back in its genes, and I could end up with something completely different. But you can do cuttings. You can trim suckers off, and you can try it for the winter if you're dry enough inside where the plant won't get, you know, powdery mildew in the house or whatever. You can take suckers off as winter hits and try to get some to survive. Put them out when spring it comes and it's warm, and you should be able to get them growing, and then you've cloned your f favorite plant. You're not collecting seeds off of the tomato plant, but cloning it. Cloning it is 100% different than seed. So a lot of times, if you planted different things in different pots or different soil, and you think, what did I do wrong? It may have nothing to do with you at all. It's simply mother nature creating each and every seed as an individual. And that's why many times your plants that you planted, be it cucumbers or zucchini or any type of plant, that's why each seed can be different. And that's just the way it works. That's how a lot of times new varieties develop. Somebody gets something that's completely different and they don't understand it tastes different, it's colored different, it's growing different. And that's when they start cloning the plant and they work with it and then they maybe put it in a greenhouse and pollinate it that way where nothing else can cross contaminate it. And if it works, then they can sell you the seeds. But otherwise, keep that in mind, not every plant is the same. So with that, have a wonderful day and don't forget to eat what you grow. And I am just so jazzed over my trough that was so cheap, easy to set up, nothing to put together. And geez, next spring, I could take all that soil out, replant all over the garden, different things, refill it and move it if I want. Or it was so full of leaves from my garden, it will go another year. I can just take the tomatoes out if they're not looking good and replant something else. Love it. Bye-bye. So what I've been doing here is I've been grooming and taking out anything brown, see, or yellow. Even this has got yellow spots, and I'm just taking it out because the plant's gonna be finished as soon as the weather cools down. But you know what? I have not found one hornworm on here. Now, I think I found one early on, one, but in the bird garden, I have seen wrens and different birds come and climb around the branches I put in here, and what they're doing is they're removing the tiny hornworms. So this worked out really good. But yes, I'm getting rid of all the yellow leaves, and I don't know if, let's see, is this a spider mite? No, it's just yellow leaves. Taking all that off, trimming anything back that the plant doesn't need, cleaning it up, and the sunlight will also help ripen all the green tomatoes on there. So this has really been beautiful to do here and work here. And when the plant dies back, it's not always a disease. It's nature, it's nature pulling it back to the ground and turning a plant that is really meant to be for one season into soil now. But for now, we wanna keep this thing alive as long as we can, right Zoe? Zoe, what are you looking for? You're so busy, I know. 
and let's clean it up. It'll look nicer and it will bring more sunlight into the plant, which will keep it healthier longer. I don't know where she was. Oh, gosh, I never know where she's at. And a lot of times she's right under my feet. Oh. You want to say goodbye? No, I have been running everywhere. Oh, it's my scissors.